Today on AE Blues, I'm going to show you my favorite features of the latest release of After Effects 2015.3, right after this. Before I give you my review and favorite features, and before you update your After Effects version, please check two things. First, After Effects' latest version up until this recording is 13. 0.8.1. This is mostly a bug fix update, so it's very important that you make sure you have this release and not the first one, which is 13.8. Second, keep in mind that when you update any of the Creative Cloud software, the default is to remove old versions of software. So, if you do want to keep previous versions, you have to uncheck that option under Advanced in the Creative Cloud app. One of the major reasons to upgrade your After Effects version is the performance. In a recent version, there has been a problem with smooth playback. I'm going to show you a comparison. This is After Effects 2015.2, also known as 13.7. I want you to look here in the info panel. I'm doing a preview with cache before playback. So it's gonna catch the frames, and then it's gonna try to give me a playback. I got just a lossless video here with audio. Shouldn't be a problem, let's see. Pressing zero, it's catching the frames. Now I'm gonna press again, look here. Okay, as you can see the first Pass wasn't so good. I'm gonna purge cache. I'm gonna try this again. Um, clicking zero for preview. Then I'm doing this again. Okay, and you can also hear there's a bit of delay in the audio even in the second pass. Now, this is the latest version, okay? This is 2015.3 or 13.8.1. Notice the one you gotta upgrade. Okay, now I'm gonna try this again. Notice the info panel. Pressing zero one time, it's caching the frames. Once again. Perfect. If there was a reason to upgrade, this is it. Okay, the performance. In the latest release of After Effects, you now have the ability to send your compositions to Adobe Media Encoder and keep your render settings. This feature has been long waited for. Please watch my tutorial on rendering workflow After Effects versus Adobe Media Encoder to see the differences between rendering through these two apps prior to this release. In short, Adobe Media Encoder did not keep After Effects render settings and that made encoding through Adobe Media Encoder less comfortable to say the least. Now, in 2015.3, you have a new feature called Q in AME. Let's see how it works and see a comparison between this feature and add to Adobe Media Encoder's Q. I got a little composition here, just an animation from a layer going side to side. Now, let's use the new feature. Click on my composition, Control M. Now, I'm in the render queue. I got a new button here. Q in AME. Click on the button. Now in Adobe Media Encoder, I can render my file. This almost looks the same as if we did it with Add to Adobe Media Encoder's Q. Click on the composition, composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder's Q. This is what you do prior to this release. We can see another Q here. Almost looks the same, but there are a few differences. You can see the location is different. In the Q&A ME, the location is the one I set in the render settings, whereas in Add to Adobe Media Encoder's Q, the location is in a folder inside my project folder. Let's click on the preset here. This is from Q&A ME. You can see the motion blur is maintained. Also, all the render settings will be maintained. Let's click on the other one. No motion blur. That's because when you use add to Adobe Media Encoder's queue, 
you get current settings. And if the master switch wasn't turned on, you won't get the motion blur. So, in short, the render settings are kept when you send a composition through QNAME. The quality, resolution is something you set in Adobe Media Encoder, but frame blending, motion blur, proxies, guide layers is something different. So basically almost all of this is maintained when you use the QNAME. All you had to do is just put a check mark here and click QNAME. Even if you render the file, if you changed something, let's say I changed this color to green and I want to render this again, all I got to do is just keep the check mark, QNAME, click here, and you can see you got the same composition you left in After Effects. So QNAME really is After Effects render settings, but Adobe Media Encoder's output model. All the codec settings and format options should be set in Adobe Media Encoder. Let's talk about Lumetri. Lumetri is a powerful color correction tool that's available right in the effects panel and After Effects. You got your color wheels, you got your curves, you also got creative features with presets. There are much more presets than there were last release. And I think the big thing here is the white balance selector. This is new to this version of After Effects. Just pick a color that's supposed to be white and you white balance the shot. Also, you got HSL secondaries so I can make a secondary color correction. Say I want to change this doll here. So one way to do it, add another instance of Lumetri color. I'm going to choose my secondaries. I'm going to pick that color. Maybe add another one of this color. I'm going to show the mask. And I'm going to play with the lightness and the saturation till I get layer selected. I think that's about it. Now I can add a mask around it. And in the effects, Lumetri 2, add this selection to the mask. And now in the correction, I change the color to something else. And that's Lumetri. Let's talk about the next feature, which is more of a bug fix, really. But I don't know, since CS6, this feature was missing. So I call this a feature. I got a fly here. And I want to pre-compose this fly. So select all the layers, Control Shift C. And let's call this fly. Now, as all of you know, the bounding box of the fly is the whole composition because when you select more than one layer and pre-compose, you are in the composition dimensions. But if I click the collapse, now the fly has a bounding box cropped to its size, which is great because now I can move the fly around my composition and get comfortable with knowing its bounding box because in the recent version, even when if you were collapsed, you would just see this and this is less comfortable. Speaking of comfortable, now in the latest edition of After Effects, I can scroll panels with the hand tool. Let's see, just gonna duplicate my compositions, select all of them, click twice. So I have many compositions here, like you're, if you're in a big project. Now, if I need a composition that's 
outside my view I need to go here and find it but now now I can just press the spacebar key and I can pan through and it's not just in the timeline but I don't know if I got an effect here I can do this here See, I was in this type of situation where my project was this and put effects and I can't see so I can just do this. Very nice feature. Okay, that sums up my favorites for this release. There are of course more features and also many bug fixes. Please see the links in the description. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Take care.